Why is the sky dark at night? Hardly the most profound question we face this week, but today is the day of the big questions. Some of them we know the answers to, and some we don't, at least not yet. Maybe it's your generation that's going to find the answers to the questions we're going to pose today. But let's start with one that we do know the answer to. Why is the sky dark at night? Now, I'm a theoretical physicist, and we theorists are renowned for being able to prove anything you like, even that black is white. So I'm now going to prove to you that the sky shouldn't be dark at night. Let me show you what I mean. Here's your eye looking out into the night sky. What do you see? You see stars. Just imagine a few stars fairly nearby, maybe 10,000 light years away. You just see them shining at you. Now much further away, 100,000 light years, more stars, each one faint because it's so much further, but there's many more of them that distance away. Go out further still, maybe a million light years, fainter still, but even more of them. In whichever direction you look, eventually you find a star. You can see it here, filling in the gaps all the way across the sky. So wherever you look, there should be a point of light right the way across a white sky at night. Don't believe me yet? Let's do a real demonstration and show you. Imagine that this is the universe. And the camera here is your eye. It's going to look out across that universe at night for you. Let's see what you see. Now, we've got stars right the way across. We couldn't bring them all into the theatre, so I brought them in some slices, four slices, across the night sky. Let's turn on some stars nearby. What do you see? You see some stars twinkling. Now let's go further out and see what happens when we turn more stars on. It begins to fill in the gaps. And further away, and yet further away, until eventually the whole of the night sky is filled in with light. Wherever you look, there's light shining at you. The white night sky. So, why is the sky dark at night? Not such a dumb question after all. Well, this one we know the answer to, and it all goes back to the discovery of this man, Edwin Hubble. An American astronomer made one of the greatest discoveries of all time. In fact, so famous that they named a telescope after him. The Hubble telescope, which they shot up in a rocket and is now orbiting around above our heads, looking out into the night sky. This shows how important he is, because when the telescope wasn't working properly, they were even prepared to send astronauts up there to fix it, named after this man. His discovery is perhaps one of the greatest discoveries in science, because it places us in the universe more precisely than anybody else has ever done. He discovered that the universe is expanding. Now, how did he do that? Well, let me give you some demonstrations to give you a feeling for how you discover the expanding universe. Let me begin with something that's familiar to you, sound. The reason I'm going to use sound is because in many ways it's like light. So, can we turn on the sound? Hear it as it goes round, up and down, up and down. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> now, sound is like light. As it was whirling towards you, you heard the pitch go up. Away from you, the pitch dropped. 
It's the thing you're familiar with. Every time an ambulance or a police car goes past, you hear it. It's called the Doppler shift. What's happening is that the sound is being crammed up. The waves are being crammed up as they shoot towards you. The pitch rises. Going away, the pitch falls. Now, the pitch of sound is very similar, for our purposes, to the pitch of light. The pitch of light meaning the colour. Let me demonstrate what happens with real light, with the rainbow here in the theatre. So if we lower the lights, this rainbow will become clear to our eyes. There's a whole electromagnetic spectrum out there beaming at us. But our eyes only pick up that little rainbow in the middle, the colours of red through violet. You see it spread here before you. Now, different elements shine in different parts of the colours. Sodium, for example, shines in the yellow. And the sodium streetlights shining yellow, very familiar to you all. Now, if that sodium light was on a star that was rushing away from us, its pitch would drop, just like the pitch of the sound. The pitch dropping means its colour would go towards the red. And if that star was going really fast, the pitch would drop far to the red. In fact, it would eventually go so far that it would be out the region that you could see. So, it would be red-shifted so much, your eyes wouldn't see it anymore. It would be like blackness out there. So what we have seen here, are you beginning to get the idea? Things rushing away, things go so far to the red, they eventually disappear. Right, let's look at our picture again. This is where we came in, the eye over here looking out into the stars. The nearby stars are shining at us. The further and further you go away, the stars get redder and redder until eventually it shifted out of what you can see, blackness. So the expanding universe, the pitch of the light changing, eventually you're left with blackness. There's a limit to the visible universe that you see with your eyes. And that all came from the discovery of Edwin Hubble, 60 or 70 years ago. Well, that's half of what he did. The second part of what he did is even more interesting. Let's look at the next picture. It's not just that the stars are rushing away and making things red, but the further away you look, the faster they're receding. It's just like these cars here. Suppose that we're the observers here, the astronomers looking out into the night sky, and here is a galaxy fairly near, rushing away from us at, say, 30 miles an hour. And then, even more distant, is another galaxy that's rushing away from this one at 30 miles an hour, which makes it 60 miles an hour, rushing away from us, faster. And an even further one is 30 from this, and 30 from this makes it 90 from us. So the further away they are, the faster they're hurtling away, the redder the light is shifted, until eventually it drops off into blackness. So there you have the idea of the expanding universe. Things rushing away from us, shifting into the red, until you can no longer see them at all. So this is the sort of picture that we have from Hubble's work. And I can show it to you now in a model of the real expanding universe. So I said to Bryson Gore before we started this series, what sort of models can you make? Anything, he said. What about the Big Bang? Well, well, let's have the universe here in the theatre and see it expanding before our very eyes. <laughs>